Hey, it's Brian Burns, and welcome to this episode of the B2B Revenue Leadership Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the Amazon Leadership Principles with John Rossman. John ran a division there uh, a little bit ago. Now he's doing some writing and some consulting. He's written a couple of books about Amazon and how they approach things. And I've got some experience. Some of my uh, friends from quite a while ago on the development side had been at Amazon, and I, I stayed in touch with them. And I was always amazed at how fast they moved and obviously as a customer, how well integrated things are. But we're going to dig into that and that customer experience that whether you're in sales or marketing or in leadership, it is so critical every day when I, I try and use these B2C websites. It's all the security and everything makes it so hard to use. And I'm a technical guy. I'm not like a neophyte. I really enjoy technology. I, I'm on the computer all day. And when I'm frustrated with all these codes and things that you have to memorize and multiple passwords and what, what your first pet's name was just to get in is ridiculous. So after the show, I'm going to talk about or give you an update on the classes and the progress that we're making and how it's going to change going into the summer. So wait up for that. Also, make sure you're checking out the other episodes of this show. It goes back um, quite a while. Over a year, there's been some great interviews, a lot of change going on in the industry, and you, you see that what's going on there. Also, make sure you're checking out Prezi for Business. Prezi for Business is the easy way to share your presentations so that people can see it. You can see how far they get through it, and you can tell your story. I'm going to have a Prezi Evangelist on later uh, this month. I'm sure you'll enjoy that. Also, check out gong.io and the research they're doing. They just rebranded their website. It looks pretty cool. Also, nudge.ai and what they're doing for you automatically with ABM, account-based marketing and account-based sales. It's a smarter way of doing it, leveraging relationships that you already exist to get into new accounts. And that's part of what I teach in the course is how to, how to do that in a natural humanistic way instead of the old-fashioned pitch, pitch, pitch to get two minutes to try and differentiate yourself. It's just that is diminishing in return. We all see it. It doesn't work on us. Why do we think it works on other people? Let's get into the interview, and I'll sum it up at the end. Hey, John. Uh, welcome to the show. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Oh. Well, thanks for welcoming me, Brian. Um, yes, yeah, so my name's John Rossman. I uh, I run a, a niche uh, professional services and advisory firm called Rossman Partners. Uh, a while ago, I was at Amazon, so I was a, a early executive at Amazon. I was there from early 2002 through late 2005. I got to launch the marketplace business, so that's third party selling at Amazon.com today. That's over 50% of all units shipped and sold, and 3 million sellers on that platform. And then I ran the enterprise services business, so I had responsibility for Target.com, Toys R Us, Marks and Spencer, and a bunch of other great brands. And after I left Amazon in late 2005, um, with my clients basically helping, you know, make digital strat define and make digital strategy happen, I just started to see the impact of all the kind of tricks and strategies and, you know, mindset maneuvers we would do to get results at Amazon and to think through um, our situation and started to use those with my clients. And I had one client in particular who's just like, John, you got to write a book. So I wrote, um, I've written two books. One's called the Amazon way 14 leadership principles behind the world's most disruptive company. And that's about the leadership principles of Amazon, which really defines how they think through things and how they work together. And then I wrote the Amazon way on IOT, which is a book about digital strategy, really in the internet of things. And it helps a business leader think through what are the opportunities for IOT in their business, um, largely using Amazon as a reference point for those ideas. Excellent. And so what was your experience like when you arrived there? Was it like no other company you had ever worked for or? Well, I mean, um, it, I guess in some ways, yes, in some ways, no. It, you know, so I was there in early 2002. And, you know, if you kind of go to the way back machine, you know, it was a it was a small company at that point. Yeah. It was still unclear whether they were going to survive or not. 
And, um, you know, we had our first billion dollar quarter in holiday 2002, right? Today it's a $240 billion <laughs> revenue organization, right? So it, it, it's, but, but the, there's a lot of things that are still in common. And that's why these leadership principles are so vital to that organization. When I was there, they weren't written down, but we used them in everyday meetings to, to get clear on how were we making decisions and, and how did we interact together and how did we think through um, situations. And sometime after that, they codified the 14 leadership principles and stuff. But it was, you know, it was a, it was a great place because you could, you could get real work done without, um, you, you know, with a very accountable um, uh, structure and stuff. You didn't have to check in too often. Once you kind of, understood what the mission was you you were left you were trusted to get that mission done and so in that way it was a, it was a great place uh and and i think continues to remain for a big company a fairly low bureaucratic uh organization hard working but but not bureaucratic so yeah I, i've had uh several people that i had worked with on the technology side have gone there and had really flourished. And I remember when they went there, I was like, wow, that's kind of a unique choice. Because at the time, you know, it was probably a little bit before you were there. You know, you just thought of it as an online bookstore. And it certainly has turned into a lot more than that. And I've had friends, you know, make careers out of just, um, you know, uh, getting people on to AWS, Amazon Web Services, and, Mm -hmm. and you just see the you know, that they're really kind of a very unique company. Oh, let's talk about those principles, though. For the listeners, you know, what, what would they get out of your book? Well, um, you know, so there's 14 leadership principles that, again, kind of just defines, you know, the culture and expectations that people have of each other and what they prioritize. The first is customer obsession. The 14th is deliver hard results and kind of two through 13 could be in any order um, you want, but it, it really is. It's a, it's a set of complementary principles. Sometimes they're not in direct alignment, but that actually is really healthy because that makes you really work towards a, you know, a solution or an answer that, that gives you the best of everything, but it really defines, you know, how Amazon um, thinks through things and how they work together. And, Um, you know, I think there's a couple of, you know, kind of hallmark ones, um, in there, but uh, under each one, I just try to, um, explain it, give examples of it in action and some tools that you can use to, you know, help operationalize or make that principle, you know, real in your, in your life and in your business. And, And it's a, it's a, it's a quick read. I try not to repeat myself. And, and my whole goal when I was writing the book was that somebody could read it on one plane ride with a glass of wine and stuff. So I I try to make it, I I have a very direct uh, style. Yeah. And why did you leave? What, what uh, did you want to do next with your career? Yeah, so I just I wanted more control of the the type of work that I I was doing and you know that I was making all the commitments that I had to live up to uh, and everything and so I got to be a partner at um, an early partner at a at a great professional services firm called Alvarez and Marcel and and a, a number of ex colleagues of mine from Arthur Anderson were there and I was a partner there for 12 years and I continue to work with uh, Ng and M and everything. But um, I just, you know, when I was at Amazon, I just run, ended up running a very big business. It was international. Um, and, and, and those were challenging times. I think everybody kind of remembers the last, you know, eight, nine, 10 years of Amazon. But there was a long stretch there, about an eight year period where, you know, from a stock price standpoint and from a results standpoint, it was it was really up and down, you know, and stuff. Right. And so it wasn't clear that um, they were going to have anything close to the type of success that they've had today. But I learned I learned so much about uh, strategy and, and getting to clarity on ideas before you proceed with them, how to use metrics to um, 
to drive for performance improvement, how to how to innovate by solving a problem, you know, and everything. And um, and so those are just, you know, continue to be the tools that I use um, to help drive results with my clients. And and like, how do you get your clients? It, it must be your network or is it the book? Is it uh, reputation? Is it all of that or? Yeah, it, it, it's all of that. I do a lot of keynote speaking. So I'll do probably, you know, 40 keynotes this year, whether it's to executive teams or boards or conferences. And so I meet a lot of people um, through those. And so, yeah, but the books, you know, the books are the world's best calling card. Right. So um, so the books definitely open open doors and, and people connect with me. And, you know, really, Amazon does me all the favors in the world. Right. They continue to be. You know, I think the best example of a a world class operator and a systematic innovator, and they're doing it across so many different lines of business, but they truly connect those businesses together. There's there's true synergies and and dependencies between those businesses. They aren't just kind of fictional um, synergies and everything. And so Amazon just continues to be this great model of, you know, focusing on the customer, you know, leverage technology and data to create new experiences, to create, um, um, better operational results and, you know, that you have to try new things. And we, you know, we call those things bets at Amazon, right? And you got to have, a certain perspective on how you take bets in your business and understand that those types of investments are different than some other types of investments you make in your business. And you need to have a different governance model around them and, and execute them in a different way. And, and so, you know, Amazon, again, just continues to do me all the favors in the world because they are such a great story and, and their game plan is actually pretty systematic. It's pretty easy. If you, if you understand it, it's pretty easy to understand it and so what does your engagement look like with your clients um because not everybody's amazon and usually people have (laughs) yeah yeah so 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 um you know today i um i'm on the board of advisors of uh four i would say kind of smaller companies and with those teams it's it's more of just you know helping them to hash out like what is their strategy and everything right and gaining that type of clarity with my clients it's it's more of a, you know they maybe have an idea about a specific you know digital strategy or an operational improvement they they want to make and the, and they just they need an external perspective to help define and drive that result i don't do as much you know what I the classical consulting where you drive the analysis and you drive the deliverables and you manage all the stakeholders and and all of that like that's what I did at Alvarez and Marcel and and you just, it's it's more difficult to scale that and so I do more advisory where I'll typically work with one leader and really be kind of their their coach and 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 give them my best independent opinion and recommendations on you know whatever the circumstances so. I, I get to do a lot of it um, just over the phone or by video uh, today. I, I live in Southern California and I travel so much for the keynote business that I try not to travel too much for my advisory business and everything. But, you know, with that kind of coaching model, that works out really well. Excellent. And do you see other companies out there that are really uh, doing a great job using these Amazon principles? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, and, and a lot of them aren't foreign to companies, you know, and everything. Right. So there's a lot of great companies who really put the customer first and and don't just say it, but actually do it. Right. And so then the game is like, well, how, how do you use that great um, orientation for the customer to continue to reinvent the customer experience? Right. And not let it become stagnant. Um, and you know, maybe it's, it's through, you know, some, some new business model, maybe it's through some new technology, a combination of, of all of those things. Right. Um, I, I think one constant that you, that you see with Amazon is they're continually probing and trying 
new businesses. And so with a lot of, of companies, it's really like, hey, let's let's take what you're world class at and let's figure out like what's the adjacency there and how do we continue to expand on that and just not too many people, too many companies just play the scale game. Hey, we do yeah. we do something, we're just going to continue to scale it. You got to think about kind of, you know, adding to that playbook too. You start in a real small way and continue to probe that. And that's really what Amazon has has done. As you mentioned, like they started off as a bookstore. And like it's a conglomerate business today, right? So they're never stagnant in what their business is. They're always adding to that business. And I think that's that growth mindset of not just your existing businesses, but actually adding to your capabilities is is a real vital one in today's competitive world. And that's it. And I, I always found it amazing because I, I bought both Apple TV and Amazon Fire. And, you know, the Apple TV, although they, they had all the more information about me than certainly Amazon did, but the Amazon Fire, you just plugged it in. It already had my username and password on it, my Amazon thing. So all, I didn't have to do anything. And I'm like, in Apple, I had to like type it all in, my iTunes stuff, which they already knew. You know, I, I bought it from them and it was just like so seamless. And it's like somebody had to think about that and to, to really, you know, and connect those two departments. That, that, that was pretty amazing. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, kind of attention to detail and, you know, really walking through all aspects of the experience, whether it's a product or service or whatever, and thinking beyond just, you know, one step or, you know, the normal situations, like what happens when things go wrong, you know, and everything, right? Like that, that curious mindset is, is really what being customer centric is about and being customer obsessed is about, right? And, and, and being way more curious about the details and things you don't understand than, than most product or service companies are. Right. And I think most, 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 most companies are pretty comfortable with just dropping off their product or service. Right. And, and, you know, curiosity, I think is, is, you know, the number one kind of innovative, you know, skill that you need, right. Ask a lot of questions and, and think bigger than your product or service. And that's it. And what you see typically with, as companies get bigger is you get just the opposite. You get uh, these, fee, right. the fee thumbs, you know, security takes over or some kind of compliance department takes over. And then all of a sudden the website is unusable uh, from the customer standpoint. And, and I, I've certainly had that experience with, you know, my mortgage holder and my uh, mobile <laughs> holder. You know, yeah. they're, they're like, yeah, what's your user ID or your your code? And it's, right. oh, and you're like, okay, what's your best friend's uh, first name from first grade? And you're like, all I want to do is pay my bill. You know, that's all I want right. to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, the great thing is, is that these principles and these mindsets and these strategies, it's not just retail. In fact, I'd say, I'd say it, it, it's more, it's, it's way easier to have impact in non-retail industries and it is in retail and everything. And so I like working with everybody that's not retail and stuff. So whether it's insurance or industrial services or, um, you know, automotive and supply chain, you know, Driving for continued improvement and new types of business models is uh, is is really exciting, and and I think that's what you know kind of people take from the book and and take from Amazon. It's like this isn't about retail and everything. This is about business model development, operational excellence, and and exploring on behalf of your customer. And that's it, because I, I kind of come from the enterprise software infrastructure world. And when yeah. Amazon Web Services came out and, you know, I knew the guy in charge of it. I worked with him, uh, you know, a long time ago, early 90s. Who, who uh, is that? Uh, Jeff Barr. Yeah, yeah. So he's an evangelist on yeah. the team. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And, and then Alan Vermeulen. Do you know Alan? Yeah, I know Alan. Yeah. yeah. We worked together in the mid-90s. And, um, and I was like, how are they going to compete B2B? 
right? I mean, I don't know if you had any participation in that or observation. Well, or... yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, um, you know, part of AWS came from we needed to build technology, yeah. infrastructure, and services that was good enough for Amazon retail, right? And turning it inside out to have external developers was a forcing function to make sure that it was good enough to to withstand the rigors of what we needed and only external customers were going to be and developers were going to be highly critical of those services and then what they found was developers loved the on demand um, you know, pay by SIP model of the infrastructure and computing services that were being offered. And, um, and so they've just continued to add to the capabilities and to the stack of, of it. But, you know, Amazon eats their own dog food, right? So they use those things, they feed that back in, and then they make, you know, they just continue to make it simpler and simpler. Something that's hard, they just continue to make simpler and simpler for people to use. And that's it. And that's why it's been so successful because, and it's so hard to copy or compete against, you know, because when the other players, IBM and Oracle and even Salesforce try and do it, it's like, they're, they're still thinking like the nineties and now it's a whole new world. Yeah. That, and they don't have a business to run on top of their own capabilities. Right. And so, um, you know, that complement of being a platform company and providing services that both Amazon, the retailer provides, as well as others like that, that, that combination is really unique. So, you know, the marketplace business that, that I got to launch, like, you know, that is a platform capability. And so um, it was really during that time that we became clear that we were going to be two types of companies. We were going to be a retailer and we were going to be a platform company and a platform company built services that others would use. And we, and I think the killer feature that Amazon has always focused on with their platform businesses is making it self service. And, and that notion of, I need to make whatever my proposition to you to be so easy, so obvious, uh, and abstracted, you abstract out the complexity, but give it to you when you want it, want, when you need it, that notion of making it self-service so that you don't have to, uh, connect with somebody in order to understand it. That is, I think a great mindset in any business when you are providing a business or a service, like you actually want to, um, make it self-service and that allows you to do so many other things within the business. And, and how did the company not get into just the bureaucracy, the politicalness, the backbiting? Um, well, that's, that, that, that's where the leadership principles are so key, right? I'm mean, like, you know, leadership number 13 is um, disagree, but commit. And it's all about that. Um, that we are going to have vigorous uh, debates on key topics led with customer obsession, led with data. But at the end of the day, there's a decision that needs to be made. We're clear on who the decision maker is. And once they make a decision, what we can expect from, from everybody is that even if you disagreed, you are going to wholeheartedly buy into it and, and work to make it successful. Right. And so that notion of disagree but commit is vital to, you know, staying agile, making fast decisions, and uh, keeping velocity high of decision making. And so th those are and those are the types of things that that help create that culture that avoids bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is Bezos' biggest concern for Amazon. Yeah. So so they. Come from this entrepreneurial spirit, they, they were hard to create small teams. So they aren't, you know, although the organizations get big, actually like the teams that you're working with are very small. So there's high accountability. Uh, everybody knows the details of their service, of their team, of their, of their operation. And, um, and they are very mindful of, of how to stay agile and continue to take that, and, um, you know, kind of keep it, keep it fun and keep it accountable, keep it accountable for people. And how, how engaged is Bezos in all of these things? I mean, does it take somebody with a hammer to kind of make sure that the, 
the trains run on time or... <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 so I'm projecting a little bit now, right? It's been a long time since I've left the organization. Yeah. They have three CEOs now, right? So, okay. so, so Jeff is one CEO and he's the chairman and the founder. Jeff Wilkie runs consumer. Andy Jassy runs AWS, right? But the cult, the, the entire leadership gets these principles. And so, so no, Jeff doesn't have to um, personally uh continue to get involved in, you know, making sure the right things get done. But yet, like, you know, he he does have a a an attention to detail that I've seen in a lot of really good CEOs that he's able to figure out, well, this is something I need to get involved with, right? And it might seem like a really minor issue, but it, but it's, it's kind of a canary in the coal mine type of issue, right? Which is, you know, like, well, if this thing can happen, it's actually emblematic of maybe some bigger issues, right? And so he has a, an amazing ability to dive deep quickly and to get at the heart of the root cause and, and to keep things moving. But obviously, with that size of business and organization, you know, he's he's involved with a minor fraction of the details and stuff. But that's, again, back to the leadership principles. That's why those are so vital to that organization, because it helps them all get on the same page and to and to understand how we work together. And, and how are they communicated through the organization and reinforced? The, the leadership principles? Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, so they're written down. They have orientation to them. They interview for them. Uh, they reference them when they're, you know, in meetings or when they're explaining something. Um, you know, in in lots of ways, they're, you, you know, they have this, you know, saying that you know these principles are not a poster on the wall, right? Like they, the, the principles get used in everyday meetings and everyday references. Um, again, for, for people development, for hiring. Um, and so, you know, in lots of ways, they get used every day. That's cool. It has very unique. I mean, have you ever seen another it, company? It, you know, um, I've, I think there are a few other companies out there that have have some of these this orientation of like, hey, let's get clear on how we work together today. But it's not many uh, yeah. in everything, right? And so um, I think you know I won't say you know you, it's not unique, but it's certainly not typical. And when people don't uh, really fit in, is is there a clear path to move them or correct them? Um. I, 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 I think it depends is the, is the question. It, it is a demanding place to work. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and they shouldn't make any apologies for that. Right. Um, and so it's not for everybody and nor should it be. It, no place is for every type of personality or, you know, whatever your personal goals or objectives or capabilities are and everything. And so they keep a, they keep a high bar relative to, you know, hiring great talent and, and that talent has to, has to meet the contract of commitment, you know, and, and results. And so, you know, they move, they move pretty quickly when things aren't, aren't working out. And I guess I don't have to ask where they can get the book, the listeners. <laughs> no. Yeah. So it's available, you know, in paperback, it's available in Kindle. It's available in, uh, audio all from Amazon. Yes. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Hey, John, I really appreciate your time today. Yeah, Brian, thanks. Thanks for the conversation. And, and I hope I, I give your audience some cool ideas. And if they, people want to get uh, connected with you, do you have a website? Yeah, so uh, you know that the AmazonWay dot com is my website, and so you can you can see it there and connect with me there. Hey, that was a great conversation. I love learning the inner workings of a company, and then kind of pushing on the cultural differences when you try and do something that's uh, very different, different than what people are used to. People are used to the phony smiling and nodding, and then going off and doing whatever they want. I, I kind of lived that for a long time, and it was really always hard trying to get people aligned, getting people even with the within the same company talking to each other, calling each other back instead of the backbiting and finger pointing and blaming that kind of gets us all into uh, 
fiefdoms and tribes within the major tribe. The company itself has to be aligned on its true north principles. And if those aren't written, enforced, and built into the culture, the DNA of the company, it just doesn't work. And when it does, you obviously what, see what happens. Amazon is just this amazing machine right now. And we should all be working that way within our company, within our, our teams, to be working together to find a way of you know, having you know, a little bit of friendly competition, but not this backbiting type of stuff that I see so far in every company. Also, I want to give you an update on the courses. Now, I've got uh, a couple of major courses. One is start the conversation and get the meeting. This is typically for business development reps, sales development reps, but also I'm having tremendous success in marketing. If you're in marketing and you're trying to find sales qualified leads, leads that are in market or have interest and identify the organization and be able to give it to a sales rep and they can run with it and start developing that relationship and get the deal rolling. Now, what happens with most of our products in the B2B space is people are either in market or they, they're latent. The latent ones is really 99% of our total market, our TAM, our total addressable market. But what we do is we just try and you know, pull them in through inbound, but they're not going to find us. They're not looking for us. We have to go look for them, but we can't go look for them and then go, okay, from cold to interested and a phone call. It just doesn't happen anymore. It doesn't happen to you. It doesn't happen to me. And we think it's going to happen to other people with these 22-year-old people right out of college. So what I do is I show a natural, scientifically proven way of building a relationship and interest in you, in your product, in your company. And all of a sudden, you can warm up this latent market, 99% of your TAM, and get them interested. Also, what I've got is this close the conf- <laughs> it's uh, closing the complex sale. If you're selling a larger priced item, something that's in the 50k plus uh, per year type of thing, where it requires multiple people, multiple decision makers within an account, I have a course on that that shows you how to do that. How companies really make product selections and how do you manage that and drive it and make it happen. Today, this everyone's doing the same silly thing. They're throwing proposals in with discounts and hoping that it'll be closed by the end of the quarter. And unfortunately, it doesn't because they don't understand the inner workings of a company. Think about how much can you spend of the company's money without getting approval, political support, uh, administrative support within your company. Not much. You probably have access to a corporate credit card and you can probably buy a plane ticket that you'll have to justify. Now try and buy 50K of something. This is what's People don't understand. People think that, oh, that person's just going to take it to their manager, get it signed, and go to procurement. That's not how it works. If you don't know how it works, you've basically got the blind leading the blind in the sales process today. And everyone's focused on commission expense instead of total revenue. What we want is that latent market revenue. So on my website, b2brevenue.com, under training, you can uh, check out the courses. And if you're serious, I mean, when I say serious, I mean, like, if you talk to me and it's a match, you'll order it as opposed to just, I want to talk to you and get your advice. This is not free consulting. This is uh, basically discussing if the course is a match for you or not. You can pick a 15 minute spot. Uh, I've got a calendar link under the training tab. Uh, You can pick a spot um, and we can talk it over to see if it makes sense. On the website, you can get a free copy of my ebook, uh, how, how companies make product selections. In that, I give a high-level overview of the inner workings of the company. The course goes a deep dive with multiple use case examples, and it includes office hours. So it's not just a video course. It's an interactive course with office hours every other Friday. And the, the first tab is the, the, the two Fridays a month that we have office hours. We do a screen share. I pick a topic I, based off of the questions that people have submitted over the past week, and I, I prepare answers, ideas, suggestions, feedback. So it is a mentorship program. Uh, the course content is available day one. It's a year-long 
uh, monthly payment. You can pay all at once if you'd like. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions via email uh, at brian.burns at b2brevenue.com. And I re- hope you really take a good look at it because these courses are going to change your life. I mean, I've spent the last five years teaching this stuff face-to-face. I want to do it online now, <laughs> kind of sick of traveling, and I want to help as many people as I can. So it's about half the price is what people would pay if they did it in face-to-face mode where I would customize it particularly for you. But it's really the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Anybody who asks any questions, I answer all questions and we'll get back to you by the the office hours. That's it. I'll see you next time. Please check out the other episodes of the B2B Revenue Leadership Podcast as well as the Brutal Truth about sales and selling. Stop by, connect up with me on LinkedIn, and I'd really appreciate you telling somebody about the show.